Sorry. <laughs> if you want some coffee. Some coffee? Yes, very important, the six. Yeah. Sugar? Are we sure you are eating a six? Okay, maybe can we can start? Okay. Does everybody want to hear me? Oh, sorry. Because <laughs> now you hear me. No, yeah, about now. Okay. So good afternoon. I'm Mario Ferrer, and I have the honor to open this uh, symposium, and I'm here to talk to you about something in the way you move, particularly something in the way you move your coffee. Yes, I'm also here, and um, Lorenzo Guglietta, thank you, you can continue. Okay, uh, let's start, uh, uh, I want to ask for your help, please, please people, raise your hand, those among you that drink coffee, please raise your hand, You're okay, nice, 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 uh, no, keep it, keep it, keep it, please, no, just the people that, uh, when drinking coffee, steer their coffee clockwise, so to the right, okay, left, okay, very nice, and now the people, who steer it counterclockwise. Okay, now you have it. This is our first observation, that uh, in, the, um, in, the, in, the, in the general population, there's a, a, a behavior, a normal behavior, and some aberrant behavior that comes away from the normal. So it's uh, uh, this abnormal behavior. These people have, a mutant, uh, uh, has, have mutated. Their behavior has mutated, so they are mutants. So this is where we start, the, our first, um, our, our, our first observation that someone, there's some guys, some strange guys that drink it, that steer their coffee counterclockwise. So this raised some questions and we started to write some uh, hypotheses. The first hypothesis is a clear one, if, if your handness, if you are right-handed or left-handed, you tend to steer it in the other direction. Your political orientation, or people are from right wing, for, should, should drink or people from left wing. I don't know. Yes, it's just an hypothesis we try. Geographical hemisphere. This is clearly one of the basics. The, the, the Coriolis effect. People that do, do steer clockwise have an advantage against people that steer counterclockwise. Yeah, so in the southern hemisphere, do, this probably due to the Coriolis effect. So we expect that in the southern hemisphere there will be more prevalence of mutants because they have an advantage. There could be other explanations. What is your brain hemisphere more prominent? What is your sleeping position? If you tend to sleep on your side, probably you will tire up one arm, so you have to do it to the other. Yeah. <laughs> no. Your music taste, you clearly could have an impact. If you prefer Shakira over Beethoven, that could have an effect. Shakira is well known to spin to the counter... Yeah. Okay. Spin counterclockwise. <laughs> so, so probably the fans of Shakira will spin uh, their coffee counterclockwise, even if they don't know it. We don't know. So what we did was uh, we came up with um, with an online formulary. Then we spread it across the world. We have uh, 728 responses, from which 514 actually drink coffee. And it spread from 51 countries. We develop a series of linear general, of generalized linear models, and did the model selection using uh, archaic information criteria and did an averaging. We also did a PCI to to um, to reduce our, our variables, but uh, we didn't like the results, so <laughs> we tossed it. So the results. This is the um, the, the, um, the averaging of the, the coefficients of the variable. So it's uh, more or less it explains the motor. So once again, I want to, so you uh, you have the in green the uh, the ones that correlate uh, that correlate positively, 
and the, in orange, the ones that correlate negative. So for helping me again, please raise your hands, those that do not, I repeat, do not sleep on your side. Raise your hands, please. Raise, 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 okay. Now I'm going to ask you to drop the ones that don't like sugar in the coffee. No, no, keep it if it have to be. You have to sleep on your side, and now you have to put sugar, uh, keep your hands if you put sugar on your coffee. Okay, and now drop your hands, th those who are right-handed. Okay, you're probably mutants, okay? <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. This will, will definitely have an impact on the. So this, this, uh, this particular model helps us to uh, identify your, just the, the mutants that probably are around you and you don't, don't even suspect it. So be, be very, very, very My mindful that. Your phone is calling. Yeah. Yes. Mama. Oh. Which, uh, I will finish. Finish, okay. Yes. Finally, we got rid of him. Yes, folks, I'm now gonna talk to you about something quite serious. So, so far it was a nice model. Yes, of course, Mario said a lot of uh, bullshit about this model. And uh, actually it was a good model. It was based on the individual, on behavioral uh, variables. But what's the most important, as you did notice, Mario is a mutant. And our major discovery uh, as always uh, or as uh, so often happens in science, it was just made by case. So we just happened to have overheard a conversation by Mario and few colleagues of him, mutants, and uh, we just heard that they have a kind of diabolic plans. So they really want to exterminate us. So think about Homo sapiens to us uh, as it was so far. Maybe we should say goodbye to these species because they are really determined. You saw the arrogance, he wasn't, wasn't present me and so on. So they are kind of dominating uh, phenotype, you know? And yes, they are kind of really, really determined. Uh, why and how they want to exterminate us? Well, they will spread the kind of crazy virus that will invert the blood flows, uh, causing, you know, gas exchanges, uh, deregulation, and so intoxication by CO2, or to stop Coriolis force and Newton motion slows, just uh, causing the, the herd to stop its rotation. And then, you know, earthquakes and tsunamis and just will screw up uh, more and more. And as always in uh, good political strategies, they will cut research funds because they know <coughs> that our brains can do the job. And this is kind of a detailed plan of them. You know, they will attack. It will try to destroy our symbolic plants like Paris, Rome, and Taj Mahal. I don't know. Yeah, they are quite bad guys. That's why we weren't satisfied to have just one model at the individual scale. We wanted to understand how patterns can be at the broad scale. So all over the world, we started to, let's say, spe uh, build a species distribution model. So we, we used a uh, maximum entropy algorithm, namely the program accent. And we built a model uh, addressing the effect of climatic variables, sorry. And, uh, and of course, some of the most known in literature descriptors of mankind, like corruption, alcohol, beverages, and yes, even penicides. But we wanted to be discreet, at least in the picture, so we used such that. <laughs> so we came up with such complicated results, aren't they? So we will skip them all because the, product, the final product we, we will see in a, in a while. That's just a picture of us when we will finish our coffee supplies that will be replaced by beer supplies, which actually allowed us to finish the work. <laughs> and here it goes, the perfect, let's say the most favorable habitat for mutants. So mutants like places highly corrupted, and of course, if you want to intrude into society, what's better to pay people, to corrupt people, and you will have a lot of friends and your network will, uh, will uh, help you in this job. And wine is the same. So a higher level of, high, of wine consumption was related to the higher probability of occurrence of mutants, and that's the same reason about corruption. UFO, well, we don't know their region, where they come from, but we know they move by UFO, so it's, it makes sense, right? And yep, it also came out some relation with size, namely uh, they like 
um, places where men have a medium to large penis size. That's probably something related to uh, an advantage in, in reproduction strategies. So, and that's the final product, let's say, our model at the global scale. Yeah, we can see that uh, Europe is just uh, screwed up and uh, they are quite widespread there, aren't they, all over the world. So they are really a profile of an invasive species, I might say a pest species. That's why we really need, I urge you people to, to, um, to worry with me because I show you the, the, their plan, their diabolic plan, they really want to exterminate us, believe it or not, and you already saw there are mutants among you. Uh, and I also saw one of you. <laughs> so maybe some of you will just get arrested after the presentation. Sorry, it was a tricky presentation, but we really need to fight these, these uh, bad, bad mutants. And so at the moment, we are kind of busy in uh, marketing. We are just trying to get you know, some monetary gratification, not only science or fight, fighting. We, we didn't have so much success so far, but we will keep on it and continuing this struggle for the, the existence of the humankind. And that's it, folks. Thank you to everybody, especially to Francesco, who made the, the comics, and uh, all the people that helped with the divulge the, the, the form. And you for the opportunity, because it was a really nice time. We did laugh a lot at home, so we wanted to share also some of the funniest uh, as where we, <laughs> we got in the formula. I don't know, like speaking about aroma, I drink my whiskey without coffee or sleeping position, facing up until I have to pee and then on my side. And that's it. I like the way you move. <laughs>
We start with the, the, the observation, no? They're mutants. Okay, if they are mutants, they, they, are, they have to compete with us for, for, for somewhat. So if they are, they are evil in the way they, they, they try to replace us, no? They, they, they're a, a different species, a different uh, something that want to take our place. Well, the... <laughs> I want to ask kind of an, it's not a related, not very related question, but a hypothesis question. Um, and I have to say, uh, as a neuroscientist, I was slightly offended at the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, and I'm thinking, these are subject. These are human beings. These are subjects with a rich internal uh, milieu, uh, uh, experiences, goals, desires, and so on. And you're leaving that entirely out of the picture. Uh, that I think one hypothesis that you you could have considered. I was a little bit disturbed to see you didn't at all. Is that subjects stir in order to achieve a particular goal? So when I go to the coffee stir counterclockwise, it's because I think that I will achieve um, some tastier product than if I were to stir counterclockwise. So I'm, I'm wondering if you could consider whether um, the beverage uh, being stirred uh, might influence the behavior. So, so this brings up this sort of main point I wanted to make, is, which is you restricted the study to one out of many beverages which are stirred. So you could have, you could have gotten some data on this hypothesis by considering tea stirring or by, say, considering uh, if someone was adding, um, how do you call it, artificial sweetener. Do you also stir clockwise, or perhaps when you add artificial sweetener, more people stir counterclockwise? So, I think if you start, if you consider, to come back to the original point, mm -hmm. what's the purpose of stirring? Uh, what does the subject have in mind? You might get uh, a bit deeper. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, at least, uh, w at least w when the initial observation was, for, because we were all after lunch drinking coffee, and that was me among other people, because uh, and the other other the people were, were standing like this. And, but it was uh, not the, uh, it was not a conscious act. Everybody steers the coffee; and they, they just go steering, and they don't say they, when you have to. When they ask you, when you ask you, which way do you steer your coffee? You you don't you you, you have to be you you don't know it. Uh, by heart, you have to think about it. Uh, I'll do it this way. I'll do this. So it's a, an unconscious novel. So uh, I don't know if it has to be. Uh, it's fair enough. But then, but just now, you have 300 and some odd people who will now, the next time they stir their coffee, think just <laughs> once. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I, I was thinking on, on something along more of the patent lines, and I'm uh, uh, actually <coughs> I'm willing to take a cut, by the way, <laughs> okay. uh, of that, which is I was wondering, since you, you postulate, and I think you are uh, very convincing, I like my skeptical colleagues here, <laughs> about your, 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 uh, your idea, then if it's a mutant, there must be some degree of heritability, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure that you have tested. I don't need to look at the data. I trust you guys blindly. Um, and, uh, but if, if that is the case, then I, I think that you might be onto something because you might have invented the cheapest paternity test ever. <laughs> so. You definitely get a cut. You definitely get a cut. You're going to get a cut. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a question back? Does we need anybody in the audience to know? Let me see the paper. So if you go back to the, to the map, with, oh, you can't. Um, so what I noticed, um, no, it's a different presentation now. Oh, okay. What I noticed uh, is that in America, in the US, 
there's actually a really low rate of mutants, even though I think corruption and, and evil things are running rampant there. <laughs> so could you, could you um, comment on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, and I think it's one of those cases where pinicides maybe can say something. 